Hi everyone. This afternoon I've come up to one of my very favourite places to go fishing and that is Lake William Hovel. This place is just absolutely beautiful for so many reasons. Rightio folks, Lake William Hovel was built in the 1970s when they constructed the dam on the King River to dam up the water so that they can use it for irrigation purposes in the King Valley. And sometimes during times of drought we'll also use town water in Wangaratta from here in Lake William Hovel. The fishing is great here for redfin. There's a lot of redfin in the lake, mainly small ones, making it a great place to bring the kids to go fishing. It's not a trophy lake and it's not the sort of lake you would travel hours for if you're an elitist fisherman looking for that personal best. But it is a fantastic little lake to bring the family to catch a few redfin, maybe catch a couple big enough to fill it and to go for a swim because the water is immaculately clear. At the moment I can see about 8 feet into the water. Sometimes you can see up to 12 or 13 feet into this water it gets so clear. The best swimming spot you'll ever come across, a great fishing spot. Mainly trout fishing in the winter and redfin fishing in the summer. That's the way I look at it. The redfin usually start biting around about now, just after Christmas, and they'll go through until sort of early to mid-autumn mid and they'll start slowing down. It's mainly small redfin, but you do get the odd bigger redfin. Now, I haven't had any reports just recently of redfin being caught here in Lake William Hovel, so today I'm hoping to come up with my own fishing report. It might be good or it might be bad. I'll tell you another couple of good reasons to come up here. There is no sounds anywhere. There's no highways, no roads, no industrial noises in the background. The occasional four-wheel drive on the back tracks here or the occasional distant boat across the lake and that's about it. It's only a small lake of 15,000 or 14,000 megalitres. Speed boats are not permitted. There's no speed boats up here, no water skiing, no wake boats, no jet skis. Nice and quiet. And because these big boats aren't allowed on here, that makes it a prime lake for kayaks, which is why it's so popular with kayak fishing. The clear water, the lack of boats, the no background noise, and best of all, there's no phone service up here. I know for a fact that for the rest of this evening, I'm not going to get any work emails coming through to my, my mobile phone because there's no phone service. I'm going to leave my phone in the car. There's no point in me taking it. It's just a great place to get off the grid and bring the kids for a fish, a swim and a barbecue and just enjoy one of the absolute jewels in the crown of North East Victoria, that is Lake William Hovel. Now I'm going to be trawling at first with my Halco Crazy Deep Lure which gets down around 18 to 20 feet. I've also got a little wild bait minnow that I want to trawl across the, the grassy flats and the shallower areas and up further up in the river, in the King River arm. I've got some Stry Tiger soft plastics I'm going to be tossing around. Whichever one catches the most fish is, will be the technique that I use the most. That's provided any of them catch fish. There's only one way to find out. Let's go fishing. Well, it's a touch. I've got him. I've got him. He is small. This is a very small fish. It's a small fish, but it's a fish, and it's a start. <laughs> Look at the size of this. That is a tiny little red fin taken on the Halco Crazy Deep. He's actually hooked in the head, the poor bugger. Tiny little red fin taken on the Halco Crazy Deep. Well, I like to say that one fish beats no fish every time. Oh, that's a touch. Got him. Another one in exactly the same spot. This one's a little bit bigger than the last one, I think. Still not a big fish. Exactly the same spot. Remember I said I was going to paddle back down and paddle back up through? That's exactly what I've done. And then I've picked up another fish in exactly the same spot. Redfin are very much a schooling fish, and it's not uncommon to catch more than one in one spot. Actually, he's no bigger than the other one. He just bit harder maybe. If he's bigger, then he's probably about a millimetre bigger because he's almost identical. Nice little redfin. Oh, bitten on the toe by a march fly while I'm talking. This is what I like about this spot. It's a great place to bring the kids, even little fish this size, 
make kids smile as long as they wiggle. Rightio folks, I've just trawled two redfin around about here. My kayak was up around about where that tree is. So my lure would have been around about where my kayak is now. I was going to troll back through here again, but I've decided to try a different technique. I've decided to uh, just sit on top of this little area and just cast a soft plastic around and just bounce it along the bottom in this area. Because if there's a school here, because redfin do hunt in school, so if there's a school here, I might be able to pick up a few with a soft plastic. Got him. Well, that plan played off for the very first cast. <laughs> very first cast. Oh, look at the size of it. I promise there are some big ones in Lake William Hovel. There's actually a good size range up here. This time of year we get a lot of the small ones. Another little weenie redfin. You know, I'm using the Strike Tiger Nymph in bubblegum colour because redfin love bright colours. And I'm using the 1 8 ounce jig head, which I think is about 3.5 grams, to be honest. I'm not 100% sure, but it's... Something like that. Here we go, got him. He's tiny. Oh, he got off again. He might have just had a hold of the tentacle of the nymph, I think. No, he hit it again. He wants it. He had another go. I don't know where he's... Oh, he's, he's taking his touch of that. Must be a bloody small fish, got him. <laughs> oh, there he is, I thought I lost him. Look at this, it's heaps of small fish. This bubblegum coloured nymph from Strike Tiger is absolutely dynamite on the redfin. You can see it standing out there against the dark background of my Safari H2O kayak or the shade of the hill over there. Now these redfin are small. They're very small. They're actually probably similar to the little redfin I caught at Lake Hume the other week. But I've had some wonderful feedback from that video from kids that have gone to Lake Hume and caught these redfin. They don't have to be big to be enjoyable. And up here in Lake William Hovel, there's always the chance of catching a bigger one. And when I say big, my biggest ever redfin came out of here and it was 43 centimetres, which is not a giant by some people's standards. It's a giant by my standards. <laughs> but not a giant by some people's standards. It was around about three pound. Got him. Ha <laughs> ha, way out there in front of the kayak. Look, he's so big he's towing the kayak along. <laughs> Aren't you just beautiful? No doubt there'll be a few people going, nye, 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 nye. when they see me throwing redfin back in the water, there'll be people saying, he's not allowed to do that, it's against the law. Well, right now, I'm going to dispel a myth. Here in Victoria, and in New South Wales, it's not against the law to release redfin in the water that you caught it. That's at the time of filming, which is January 2018. Laws can change. But at the moment, it's not illegal to release redfin into the water where you've caught it. In both states, fisheries encourage anglers to dispatch redfin and not release them. It's definitely illegal to be in possession of a live redfin. In other words, if you put it in a live well, a keeping net, a bucket of water, that's illegal. If you're caught in your car with a live redfin in a bucket, that's when you're in a lot of trouble. It's illegal to relocate redfin, take them from here and put them somewhere else. But it's actually not illegal to release them into the water in which you caught them. That is a myth that has been started by some keyboard warriors on the internet that never actually go fishing and think that they know everything there is to know about fishing. In a lake like this one, Lake William Hovel, it's only got trout and redfin. There's nothing else in here. If we take the redfin out, I mean, we never really could, but hypothetically, if we could take all the redfin out, and we did, what would happen next? I know, we'd have a lake that wasn't worth fishing. Macquarie perch and trout, cotton, and fish aren't going to fall out of the sky. They've got to be stocked in here. And until there's a guarantee that there's going to be, say, Macquarie perch stocked in here en masse, and I mean by the dozens, tens of thousands, and a bag limit and a size limit, and we can come up here and catch them and keep a couple, until that day comes, I am not going to be killing redfin. I'm happy to release them because they're the reason I'm here. 
if it wasn't for these, like the one that's on my line now, if it wasn't for these guys, I wouldn't be here today. I would have gone somewhere else, and that's no good for the tourism in the area. So I'm just trying to see what sort of bird that was that just flew past. And that's no good for the tourism in the area. No one's going to come up here to fish a lake with no fish in it. So unless there's a guarantee that there's going to be a catchable and capable species of fish stocked in here en masse to replace the redfin, I do not see why I would kill them. That would just be like shooting myself in the foot. It would be absolutely ridiculous. Something else I'll say. If I did make a law saying that it was illegal to release redfin, well, let's just say that more YouTube videos would change. I'd edit out the release. Because there's no way I'm going to remove fish and risk having a waterway with no fish in it for kids to come and catch or for anybody to come and catch. But as I said, once they can, uh, at the moment they have trouble breeding Macquarie Perch. This is a semi-alpine lake. It's at an altitude of a bit under 500 metres. But it's set, well there's another one, it's set in these steep hills and in the hilly terrain. And it's a cold water lake, so it's not really good for yellow belly or silver perch. Lots of you down there, isn't there? See ya, buddy. I <laughs> threw him and he landed fair on me paddle, the poor bugger. But going back to what I was saying, once there's a guarantee that they can stock this en masse with Macquarie perch, with not with the, the vision of an open season, but with an open season and a bag limit and a size limit, then I'll kill the redfin. But until then, I will be proudly releasing every redfin I catch to make sure that there is redfin here for people to come up here and catch, even if they're small with the odd big one, because nobody's going to want to come up here if there's no fish. There's my, my kayak, my black Safari H2O Murray. I absolutely love this kayak. I tell you what, I think while I'm here, I might just go for a swim in this nice clear water. Time to go for a swim. Look at that beautiful clear water. This has got to be the best lake in the world to swim in. The water is so clear. Look how easy it is to see my feet while I'm treading water. Just beautiful. Time to go fishing again. <laughs> Look at the size of this fish. I didn't get the hook up. I hadn't realised I wasn't recording. Tiny little redfin caught on a little wild bait, you know. I didn't realise my camera was still turned off. I only just started right there on that point because that's where I was swimming. I reckon I trawled about five metres. <laughs> Another little redfin, this time on the wild bait. Got him. Gee whiz, I was only swimming five minutes ago. I've crawled 20 metres and hooked two.
Got a fair bit of line out because these wild baits aren't the steepest diving lures. Oh, another little ready. Now I had the Halco crazy deep on when I was down in the deep water. But now that I'm up here in the shallow water, I've got the little wild bait on because it doesn't get down as deep. The Halco crazy deep would just dredge the bottom in here I reckon. Jeez mate, you've bloody hooked all, got all three hooks in. There you go, his mouth's not real great, but I'm sure he'll be right. Got him. <laughs> Gee whiz, this is a small fish. I better put the motor out of gear so that I can fight it properly. <laughs> I don't even know whether he's still there. Oh, he's still there, he just gave a kick. Is that small that the lure's still swimming while the fish is on there? Where's that big sea eagle? Oh, whoops. I've caught my leg here. It's never cool. There we go. Sometimes there's a big sea eagle that hangs around here. He's always great fun to feed. What the hell? I've caught that red fin. See ya, buddy. And I've still got the lips off the last red fin that I caught on the lure. That's a little bit odd. How do I manage that? <laughs> oh, got him. Got him on the crazy day. Just another little one. Here he comes, he's, he's skating in, skiing in, putting up a great fight. <laughs> oh, these fish just fight so well on a light line. A little bit of blood from behind the fin there, he's been jabbed. A little bit of blood, and if I throw him back like that, a shark might come along if he's not lucky, so you better be careful. Came into here hoping to uh, find a bigger one, hoping to upsize. And I think I've downsized. <laughs> Rightio, folks. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it. Lake William Hovel is a beautiful place. It's got two-wheel drive access all the way to the boat ramp. Then you pretty much need a full-wheel drive to get up past the boat ramp to the top end of the lake where I am now. Or just an old bomb Commodore or something that you don't like might get up here as well if you're lucky, but it's not a good track. <laughs> but uh, something worth noting, particularly for those of you that like to come up here to Lake William Hovel and go camping around the edge of the lake, they've really started to clamp down on people camping on Lake William Hovel. It's always been illegal, but over the years signs have been pulled down and people have just camped here anyway, and then one does it, then everyone does it, and there's been a few camps. But they've really started clamping down. They've erected a whole heap of no camping signs up here now. And I was just talking to another bloke in a boat there that said that last time he was up here, the wildlife officers were up here just patrolling. So if you are planning on coming to Lake William Hovel to go camping, I highly suggest that you consider camping on the river down below the lake or camping up above the lake along the river on the many campsites up there if you've got a four-wheel drive. And you know, in a way, I really like that because I came up here a couple of years ago, it was 36 degrees. There was a camp just around the top end of the lake, which is just off to the right here. They had a roaring campfire going. It was windy, it was hot and dry, and you could hear them yahooing right across the lake. And then over on the peninsula, or the point that I just put my kayak in, there was people camping, playing party music, and you could hear this boof, 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 echoing right across the entire lake. It was the most unrelaxing atmosphere in one of the most relaxing places on the planet. So I'm glad they've clamped down on it because it's only a small lake. But just rest assured, there are plenty of camping sites around above the lake and below the lake along the King River. 
And there's also some great caravan parks. There's the Gentle Annie Caravan Park. is an absolute ripper. There's another one at Whitfield. And so, yeah, there's plenty of other spots to stay. But anyway, folks, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I tell you what, I'm on annual leave at the moment, and I'll be coming back up here in the next couple of weeks before I go back to work because I've had an absolute blast, and I just can't wait to get back up here.